Welcome back, Digitamers. Today's video is extremely amazing. I'm so happy to introduce with, to you guys Travis O'Halloran. He took 12th place with his Red Omni deck. It was a very unique deck, really unique build, and I wanted to talk to him and discuss why he ran certain cards he ran because it was very close to the build I ran usually on Red, uh, but it's still way different because he didn't run any Tamers and he had different ratios than I would run. So there was, it was a really unique conversation. I'm going to go ahead and leave it to you guys all all uncensored, untethered, unremoved, unfiltered. But make sure you guys follow this channel, subscribe for more of this content. We do a lot of content like this. We do exclusive interviews. We follow up on the most latest recent ev events and tournaments for Digimon TCG. And as well as we show you some of the coolest gameplays and deck profiles uh, for the decks and the most competitive and fun decks in the Digimon TCG game. So make sure you subscribe for more content and watch this video till the end so you can learn all the value and get to know Travis O'Halloran and how he got to 12th place in the recent cash tournament, huge $2,200 cash tournament. So let's jump right in. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome. We have Travis O'Halloran. He took 12th in the PPG $2,200 tournament. I would love for him to introduce himself and uh, maybe talk a little bit about his deck and uh, his choices and what. why did he even choose red. So we have Travis O'Halloran. Would you please introduce yourself, sir? Hi, guys. I'm Travis O'Halloran. I placed 12th at the recent PPG 2200 extravaganza. I played Red Omnimon. And if you want to... Learn, a little, I guess, a little bit more about me and some of the things that I do. Um, I have a Patreon that I write articles for this game uh, to try to help and build the community. It's uh, patreon.com slash infomon. And I just want to give a quick shout out to um, someone I met through playing this game and who was also like a huge influence. I can't take full credit for this deck uh, because it was something we worked on together. Uh, his name is uh, Max Tapera. And you can find him on YouTube, Max Tapera, or Twitch, Max Tapera. So go check him out. Definitely a cool guy. He streams almost every day, plays games with the community. Great person. Um, definitely check him out. Absolutely. So, so Max Tapera actually has a, a, his own YouTube channel. And uh, he's, uh, yeah, I've seen him before. I've seen his content. He does a lot of funny skits. Uh, great guy, yeah, absolutely, guys. You should check his uh, YouTube out. I, also, I noticed that you have Patreon, Infomon. Um, so I th I've checked out Infomon. You, get, you have a pretty cool free article. Uh, maybe people can go check it out. Can you talk to us a little bit about the article? Oh uh, yeah, it was uh, it was kind of my breakout article just to give people an idea of what I'd be writing about. Um, aside from you know the typical deck profiles and things like that, it was mainly on how to build a healthy gaming community. Um, and about how we all need to band together and help each other out, uh, you know, not by, by not scalping boxes and cards and such. And it, I mentioned a couple places like PPG and people like Max Tapera, who I've met through this game and who have helped to make the community strong. And, you know, especially in this time right now where, you know, I know people are upset because the boxes got pushed back by, you know, a couple weeks and everything. Um, all that's in that article there. If you want to read more on it, please go check it out. If you like what you see, you know, obviously, you know, I, I have it on there that, you know, it, it's only a dollar to, if you really want to help support me and, uh, you know, for future content. Fantastic. So Travis here took 12th. He's a veteran in the card game community. Obviously, he's made a lot of articles. So, you can find um, his Patreon. Uh, yeah, yeah, so Travis here, he uh, took 12. He's a veteran in the card game community, guys. So if you guys want to support him, make sure you guys to go check out his Patreon, uh, info, um, Infomon, and you'll actually get a lot of valuable information from there. So today I was hoping to take a little bit more value from you. Uh, you have an amazing red deck here that took 12th place. So can you tell us exactly uh, the matchups you went against? What was your score in the end? Because I know people see 12th place, they think maybe you took two or three losses. Uh, how many losses exactly did you have throughout the whole tournament? Um, I only lost one game, and it was funny. It was it was actually my feature match. I was actually being I was on stream, and I it's one thing I definitely wanted to clear up. I ha I have a feeling a lot of the people when they saw like how I was playing on stream, it was a bit questionable. Um, I bricked both of my games against purple. Like it, it was all day, my deck had been working perfectly, flawlessly. You know, for that fact. 
and ironically you know call it you know it's, it's that luck of the stream where i just drew all high levels and then the one game i actually laid out my hand and you could see two omnimons i think there was like three phoenix mons and two volcanic dramons in my hand so it was it, it was awful and you can see from my deck list it, it's consistent it's just you know sometimes bricks happen <laughs> So. Yeah, so you actually bricked in your final game versus purple, and you actually lost to. The, did you lost to the first top top purple? Um, it was. Uh, I, I don't remember which purple player it was. Um, I, that was my only loss, and then the other, the other, uh, I guess somewhat negative I got was a draw. I was playing against a uh, blue Omnimon player, and it was just a really slow game. So I don't want to I don't want necessarily say necessarily say he was slow playing, but it was definitely like a slower paced game, and you know it drew out time. So, um, so I, I ended up getting a draw and one loss, and then I I won all my other rounds, mostly two O's. Actually, Amazing. I think they were, no, they were all two O's. They were Amazing. all two O's. So your 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 final score was six one. Yes. All right, fantastic. Well, well and you kind. Of, it was 5-1-1 one, one because of the draw. Okay, and, oh, you already did have a draw. Um, okay, so that makes sense. And uh, also, do you believe, because you mentioned the brick, do you believe that you had a stronger chance over purple if you were able to complete the full deck? Like, do you feel like your deck was ready for a purple matchup? Oh, absolutely. Um, I actually played... Um, so, so, my rounds for that day, I played, I played against um, four blue Omnimon, two purple and one mega zoo and uh the first purple player i played uh i had zero issues with and i just you know volcanic jermon just eats that deck alive yeah so i i, I honestly went into that purple matchup you know, feeling confident but obviously bricks happen you try to play out of them and I ended up having to play a lot of high cost cards and giving purple too much memory is never a good thing. Absolutely, it's never, uh, it's very hard for you to come back from giving uh, purple any memory because usually that just sets them up uh, to be able to control your field and to uh, just uh, punish everything you play uh, with their heat vipers and the trump swords and all that good stuff. So, yep. so ironically, just, that that was what happened during my uh my second game of the purple where i bricked and everything you know i was starting to play out of it and he opened up his opening hand he had double heat viper trump sword chimera and i, I just couldn't do anything he just kept blowing away my stuff yeah it's actually amazing that they actually ran two heat vipers you don't really see that uh, and the top purple deck only ran one but yeah man <laughs> especially with the purple mats it's so easy to get those back and to after that you just have an answer to everything uh, it's really easy uh, to control the game if you have memory with purple just because they have so much support in bt 1.0 uh, i would say that they're really strong right now so let's go ahead and go through your deck uh, i guess we could start uh, with your uh, well the digital is pretty regular right but yeah you can go ahead and start from there uh, honestly, the Digitama, I just wanted to have kind of a good variety of both because, uh, in my opinion, I needed the Yokomons to, in the case I didn't get enough power to run over an Omnimon. Uh, the idea of the deck, and when I what I discussed with Max Tapera, was uh, that we were trying to go very tall to the point where if we did see an Omnimon checked in security, or if we needed to run over an Omnimon to get it off the board without having to, you know, pay eight for a Gaia Force, um, then Yokomon can help with, uh, with, with the power bonus you get from attacking something. And there's, there's tons of ways to get power in this deck. Uh, the difference between my list and his is he actually plays three of that Metal Greymon you see down there. Um, I only have two, so I was only able to play two, which is probably what, you know, encouraged me to play more Yokomons. Oh, so that, that... interesting. You think you would have changed the setup a little bit? Maybe two Skull Greymons and three Metal Greymon? Um, I don't know what I would have done, honestly. Like, I, I kind of like my Metal Greymon at two. Uh, I, I saw it when I needed to see it throughout the day and everything. And... 
um when we get when we get down there to skull graham on everything like I, i'll talk more i'll talk more about my my pick for that uh once we get there all right yeah absolutely so let's talk about your uh, 15 rookies actually this is pretty in, 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 pretty cool i haven't seen this in a red deck actually before uh usually blue omni runs 14 they're really happy with that they don't tend to break although they it's possible still like you said uh, so what do you think about this uh, right here 15 what was the choice uh, the thought process behind this um originally um i had spent all week last week uh before the event play testing with max the parrot and everything and you know bouncing ideas back and forth off of each other and um originally i was playing uh four of the agumon that gives a, a thousand power and four of the Geomon that gives a thousand power if they have five or more in their in their uh trash he told me that uh he, he had talked to somebody and somebody mentioned to him that uh 15 is like the magic number of rookies for this deck and as soon as i changed it up i i, I forget what i took out i think i took out um oh, it was one of the megas i, I took out one of the megas and i added another rookie because i was uh the original build had eight megas in it it was playing uh four volcanic jermon four phoenix mon and so we cut a volcanic jermon and we added it and we added um another one of the vanilla rookies and then we cut Geomon down to three and added um another of the vanilla rookies to have a four four set and Geomon going to three you know makes sense because you're not going to have it set up right away it's a card that needs that needs you to you know to blow away a line of off of your opponent's board or something like that so it's it's more of a mid to late game card before it's actually going to become live all right interesting so you actually ran 16 level threes before huh uh no i was actually running 14 and uh I ended up going up to 15. So you're running the the Agumon at four, the Geomon at four, and Biomon and Monodromon at three each, maybe, or? Yeah, that, that was basically the line there. Um, I was trying to, my original concept before I, I started bouncing ideas around with, with, with Max was, um, I was trying to follow what Blue Omnimon was doing and try to build off of that since there's a lot of similarities as far as the vanillas and things go. Um, so I was trying to turn red into like the red version of what blue Omni is. And then I was bouncing ideas with Max and everything. And, you know, he was talking about uh, playing cards that, that help you to go taller. So after switching some stuff out and playing around with it, it ended up working really well. And then we just it just started evolving from there. Perfect. So now it's at 15 level threes. Um, what about the uh, and the level threes? They make sense. The Geomon is there for the extra plus one K and the two hard cast uh, just in case. Uh, what exactly? What's the perfect scenario for the two cost hard cast uh, rookies? Do you want to flood the field? Do you want to just lock your opponent at one memory? What do you what's the perfect use of these guys? Um. Obviously, you know, if, if you need them to go up on one of your Digitama, it, that's obviously, you know, the case for that. Um, but other than that, it's typically just to finish out your turn and lock your opponent at as low of a memory cost as you possibly can. And, you know, while you're doing that, you're also kind of making your board wider and giving yourself more options to evolve on top of. Yeah, I've noticed that sometimes... Uh... Uh, maybe when there's two of like the monodromons in my hand, I'll toss out both. But I th uh, just to lock my opponent at one. Let's say I'm at three memory. Uh, but actually, that hurts me. I feel like I feel like it's much better to drop a monodromon and then Evo a Corridormon on top of him for two, uh, or something uh, other than dropping too many of those guys on the field. Uh, I don't. Do you share that sentiment? Um, it depends on the situation. In all honesty, like obviously, if you know you're going up against an Omni matchup. And especially if you're going to be possibly giving them enough memory to work with because, you know, mid to late game, if they already have like, you know, if they already have a level five out or an ultimate, you know, they can just pay to go into Plessio or, you know, Phoenix and then put you to six and play Omni and then just clear all the cards of the same name. So 
you really got to be careful with how you do that because you definitely, especially against blue, where they can just hammer spark and make that play viable, even at one. Um, you just you got to change it up depending on the matchup. So there's gonna be times where you're gonna go, okay, pay two, go to go into vanilla, and then pay two, go up into core, or you're just gonna go, okay, play two vanilla rookies, put you to one. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Thank you for uh, clarifying. And then for your level fours here, you mentioned that you were trying to model um, a blue Omni deck by cre when creating this deck. Did that just, uh, did that whole plan just go out the window because now you're running 12 level fours, 15 level three. So it's definitely a different ratio totally from blue Omni, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, When... <sighs> Like I said, I had started talking to Max and everything and bouncing ideas around with him. Um, in his original build, he was playing the uh, the Greymon from the uh, from the booster set, the one that gives 2,000 power uh, okay. as an inheritable skill. Right, right. And after some play testing on both of our parts, uh, you know, it was it was it was realized that the security plus one was more prevalent because you definitely want to get as much damage in as possible and unless you're playing against red really and if you play carefully you really don't have much that you need to worry about i mean you know if, if you're swinging at purple trump sword's not going to affect you unless you're restanding your army and or omni and if, if that if that happens you know it's just bad luck but um against everything else you just kind of push in with that security plus one and then with volcanic german if you if you happen to evolve it over top, if you don't need to hard cast it to kill rookies, you know, that puts it at immediately a security plus two while still having that card in the deck as a viability for rookie rush. Perfect, absolutely. So I've talked about this Greymon before. I think he's one of the best cards in the game. We don't see any other inheritable security plus one except one more time. Uh, well, we've seen it. We see it in green also with that level three, but he's so expensive. He's so wonky the, mm -hmm. the, the one Evo cost level three and he's so hard to get off Every other security attack plus one has so much limitation to it except the security attack plus one It's super easy to access uh, the other security attack plus one inheritable was the black metal Greymon uh, and even him, you need jamming or you need reboot to get your security attack plus one. So there's so many limitations. Yeah. Greymon gives it to you for free, and he's a level four, pretty much, you know, uh, guaranteed uh, uh, level up. So would you ever run 14 uh, level fours? Would you, uh, or I'm sorry, would you would you run 11 level fours just to uh, for the blue omni? Because to blue omni, it's, they seem very comfortable with the four with the 11. Uh, what do you, what's your thoughts on that? All right, so the reason I play, or the reason it comes down to, and this is where the differences between the decks start coming in. Um, Blue Omni has a lot of draw power, whereas Red Omni has a lot of attack power. So Blue Omni can get away with playing less, less rook or uh, less rookies and less, uh, less uh, champions because, or it can just play less of everything for that matter because of the fact that it has so much draw power between. You know the Digitama, the uh, the Gabumon, and then you know it can bring back out the Gabumon and draw again, and just the in the regular inheritable draw power from evolving up. You draw so many cards in blue that you can afford to play a different um, ratio of things. Absolutely. So you. Whereas. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you you I, that's I think that's the biggest difference, right? Is the draw power. Uh, that's why maybe Blue Omni can afford running uh, things at three, uh, or maybe even one Ice Wolf Claw and still be viable stuff like that. So uh, maybe that's why. So they're very unique in, in their sense, but they still even run fourteen level threes, and that's really you know that's scary. That's kind of if I don't ride my level three, I'm pretty much screwed here. Uh, but you're you're right they do have the zudumon they have access to other things they don't need to necessarily have a level three uh, so that makes sense that's maybe th their ratios are very special to them uh whereas you picked up well that's the, yeah, that that's the other thing is um I, I didn't even mention that all right so like you mentioned the 14 level threes they don't um you, you know not not having that would be bad that's not even the case because if they have a zudomon in hand they have no problem just dropping that zudomon and drawing two cards You're because right. not only are they putting 
two cards into their hand. So they're they're plusing one at that time. They're also putting a ultimate on the board where next turn they can just go right up into Plessy and right into Omni. And then that Omni will generate two memory from swinging. Yeah, and usually there's no deck that has an answer to that Zudumon except the Trump Sword. Um, that's literally it. Uh, or maybe a Gaia Force. I guess we do have an answer for the Zodo, but you're not going to spend 8 memory on a level 5. Uh, I think that's uh, that's not the ideal play. So yeah, there's no way to get that Zudumon out of the field. Huh? Actually, I would, and I, I did it throughout the day, honestly. Um, really? I okay. have... Well, all right. So, all right. So, do the math here. If they go, if let's say they go first, okay, and they put you to seven, all right, you're paying, you're gonna, you can evolve up into your guy, like your rookie, draw a card, and then you can just play Gaia Force and put them back to one and kill their, their guy. So, you're essentially just, you're, you're taking away their advantage right there. Like, yes, they got to draw a card, but now their board's empty and you still put them at one. Okay, okay, okay. That's actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, uh, absolutely. So as long as you can answer that, you don't even need to kind of get an advantage. As long as you answer their their attempt to gain an advantage. Yeah, a, a lot of the way that red plays is you have to answer the plays that your opponent puts out there. It, and Zudomon is one of those. Like I said, if um. If you even give them one memory and that Zudomon is still sitting there, they can go right up into an Omni so easily. And if that Omni sticks to the board, then it's going to generate two memory the first time that it swings and uses its effect, and then one memory every time after that. So, and being able to do that allows them to go wider or make more plays or start up another line. So by the time you do deal with that Omnimon, you have another one to contend with and then you're just so far behind that you can't catch up like that's the scary thing about yeah. zudomon is it can put you so far ahead that um that it's just so hard to come back from if you don't deal with it quick enough all right that's that's very interesting uh, so anybody that was maybe grabbing re grabbing red and modeling maybe a blue omni deck uh, in order to build their own red deck and try to compete uh, that's not necessarily the most ideal situation just because blue has their own uh, uh, they have their own tricks up their sleeves they have their own skills and their power points that's that's why they're on their own ratios so that's really interesting uh, can we let's move on to the level so we know that you'll never so you will never play with this f level four lineup it's pretty consistent to you i've thought i've thought about reducing dark tyranimon uh into for one and just adding level fives but your setup is completely different than mine i have to find room for tamers you don't um so maybe we can just talk about your level fives here uh so your setup is you're running nine level fives how comfortable are you with nine uh nine is a very good number honestly um because through playtesting, both Max and I both realized that if, if you didn't have enough of them, you never saw them. And it was like that with all the red stuff. Because you're not playing blue and you're not drawing so many cards and everything, with, uh, with red, you have to play a little bit extra on each end. So that's why I play 15 rookies, 12 champions, 9 ultimates. Uh, because you want to be able to go quickly up that ladder just like blue can. But you also want to be able to, ha you need to have enough copies of each of those individual levels to make sure that you're not going to just get chain locked. That's amazing that you say that because if somebody looks at your deck at first glance and sees the 15 level threes, they're like, oh, he's going to rookie rush me. <laughs> but you're actually trying to go tall. You're not going wide at all. Uh, you just want to secure that. No, I mean, yeah. I mean, Rookie Rush is always a backup strategy. You can't go wrong with something that works for the moment. And, you know, if, if if Blue can do it, if Purple can do it, you know, even Green can do it, why can't Red do it? So <laughs> I think it's such a valuable strategy to run these uh, two-cost rookies at two, uh, at eight. I think it's so viable just because the Skull Greymon exists in Red. Uh, and that's the only answer anybody has to these guys. If you, you can just sit there... Uh, turn by turn uh, building them up uh, but maybe that's a little difficult for you since you're not running tamers so let me tell let me ask you about this uh how does not running tamers feel 
uh, when you want to level up uh, let's say from a level 5 to a level 6 and access that security uh, I I'm sure you usually find that you're passing the turn uh, because uh, you, maybe you don't have enough memory do you feel that way or do you feel like uh, you just get the three memory every turn and you can uh, maybe let's say jump from a metal Grimon to a volcanic Grimon and uh, you have access to that security attack immediately or do you usually have to pass the turn and then gain that access uh, next turn all right so um with, with the tamers all right so the one concept that a lot of people fail to realize when it comes to the tamers is that those tamers set you to three your opponents if you're playing a good opponent they're going to capitalize on that fact so instead of locking them at one you're essentially locking them at four so you're giving them a lot more memory to play with because them knowing that you're going to go to three they're just going to play something to put you two three or around three so instead of putting you you know to instead of putting you to two they'd be putting you to four instead of putting you to right. you know to, yeah but, but to they one, would have to have the to play two. right they would have to have that play uh, ready for them uh so sometimes yeah they'll just hard drop a cordramon uh, or whatever blocker grizzly mon to just kind of stop you and they're like yeah actually uh you're already gonna get free mana but we talked me and david jung about that and actually that sometimes can hurt uh them towards the end of the game because they just you don't necessarily have to give out that three memory if your opponent is getting it for free yeah. uh, but th that's interesting uh, you have a completely different uh, maybe perspective on tamers you don't you don't appreciate them at all it's not that I don't appreciate them. Um, in my original build, I did play two of the Tai Kamiya that gives the security attack. Uh, the other thing that you have to remember is that Tai Kamiya only goes off when you have a full line underneath one of your like megas, and it also does not affect Omnimon because That's Omnimon true. is not a red card. That's true, and and I I noticed that more blue Omni decks are running the Digivolution cards. So with only one D Digivolution, you already lose that security. But actually, that's what I thought. I thought that Ty was a late game tamer. Uh, meant for the security, but David Jung was talking to me about how uh, the three memory is the perfect number for him. It unlocks for, uh, so many plays for him. Um, allows him to be able to jump to a War Greymon. Uh, and let's say his opponent gives him uh, nine memory, right? So War Greymon allows him to jump into another Omnimon. And, uh, you know, just having that pressure that the opponent's thinking, oh, I need to give him extra memory. Or no, I'm giving him free memory. I don't want him to gain it. Let me just use it for myself. Um, I, I think I think there's a good, uh, you, you know what I mean? I think it, it, it balances itself out where the opponent has to make a play happen. And if he doesn't, he just feels like he's losing. Um, but if he does have the play, yeah, I guess he's, uh, you know, he's compensating for the free memory you're getting. Uh, but uh, so, so you don't even care about memory. You can you can make your, your plays. You can build your deck. You can build your whole lineup with the uh, with the opponent maybe locking you at one memory every turn. Well, that that's why like if you look at if you look at the build, there's a lot of two drops in there. Like the Biomons are two drops. Uh, the the other vanilla is a two drop. My my um, Dark Tyranomons they only cost one to go up into. My yeah. Ground Mons are two drops. My Phoenix Mons are two drops. So if they want to sit there and play the one-to-one -one game, I can sit there and play that game all day. And eventually I'm just going to either get a very wide board or I'm going to get a very tall line or a mixture of both by the time that they're actually like, okay, I'm ready to play the game now and they start giving me more memory. And then by then it's too late. I've already built up a ridiculous amount of advantage. And it's all just going to come in at you the entire time. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much for that clarification. That's perfectly well said. Um, so you can actually compete. You want to compete with that. You feel like you uh, maybe you'll actually gain an advantage later on. Uh, but, uh, what about have you do you feel like you um, I, I think I think this no tamer strategy. I, I totally I totally agree with you. Um, it's not it's not necessarily a gain in your side because your opponent still gains a lot of plays 
uh, I mean, he unlocks to himself basically three extra memory, like you said, or two extra memory plays. So it's not necessarily, it actually, not necessarily is a good play. How do you feel going against decks that have tamers? Do you feel like you're automatically at a disadvantage? Do you feel like you're always trying to catch up, or do you actually still feel confident, uh, you know, by dropping the Metal Greymon, uh, maybe losing, you know, he's at three, they gave you one memory. Uh, you gave him one free memory, but you're still able to catch up. Do you still think you're able to um, maybe have that build ready by the time, you know what I mean? By the time it needs to be there? Let's say you go against somebody I mean, with I, a tamer. I don't, I, don't, I don't ever feel like I'm behind when it comes to a tamer. Like, cause, like, you know, like both purple decks I played against, you know, aside from the one that I bricked against, but the, the first one that I played in the deck operated the way it was supposed to. Um, I don't mind that they get to go to three because that just opens up my plays even more because instead of me being like, oh, okay, I can only put them at one right now until I'm ready to start going on the advantage, uh, that just opens up more plays for me. That allows me to be like, okay, well, I'm going to I'm gonna go down to zero and play this Dark Tyrannomon on top of something, and now I'm just going to evolve this other line by paying three into like metal Greymon, or i can put a volcanic Dramon on top of something if they're not going really wide with rookies it just it opens up my plays so much more and then my omni plays are so much more devastating because of it because you know if let's say they play something and put me to three and they have a tamer out you know that's a free omni essentially right there to me because i'd be putting them to three anyway but they're not gaining any extra memory advantage that normally Omni, Omni would give them Absolutely, because normally you would yep, put them exactly. to like six. Exactly, exactly. Oh, so yeah. it does pay, pay off. Uh, I think you, that's an interesting, this is a really interesting discussion. Uh, uh, definitely there's a lot of people that would argue, no, you need tamers. Uh, um, you, you know, they can lock you, they can crush you. Uh, they can basically control your, your uh, and manipulate your, 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 your energy sources. But uh, there's also... Um, you know, I guess you have room for more. You have room to actually make your deck consistent. Uh, the tamers, you need to throw a turn basically, and if they're so wonky. If they're not early, if they don't come out early, they just kind of feel late, and yeah. they feel I mean, excessive. Um, some some decks really do need the tam like yellow right now. Yellow is a prime example of a deck that really needs the tamer for the for the extra memory but yellow have because the otherwise best the tamer <laughs> in the game right now they have the best tamer yeah yeah that that tk is pretty good um but yellow itself as a deck really needs that three memory to get its plays going um a deck like this really doesn't and as far as um people using a strategy of using a tamer or relying on a tamer that's fine because like you just said if you don't see that tamer that's hurting you. It's not hurting me at all. Absolutely, so, yeah. And my deck was built to counter that. So, or built to play around that, you know, putting me to one or putting me to two, something like, you know, the deck was built to, built that way for a reason. So you can go ahead and have your three memory. It's not hurting me at all. Absolutely. So yeah, when you build around tamers, uh, you're almost forced to play four. If they're not good tamers, you just wasted two or three extra slots or four complete extra slots that you could have used for more consistent cards. Uh, so yeah, the tamer play does, uh, it, it, it has to balance itself out. It's like stocks, you know, yeah, somebody has to win, pay you to for you to gain. Uh, so it's very interesting. Uh, so on the face level, tamers look you know appealing they look like they are necessary actually but they make you almost you have to change your whole play style to, the, to to for them and if you don't get them like you said you're already behind uh, so amazing amazing discussion i think this is a very valuable discussion so let's move on to the level fives uh, you mentioned that this deck actually beats omnimons and wants it wants to get into a fight with an omni so that's what the metal gray mons are there for i don't i don't assume you run that you run them for the first ability uh I never used it, and honestly, like if you ever do get the chance to use it, you probably shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, unless you are really desperate, I can honestly see a point where maybe it could actually um, turn a game in your favor if you're really struggling from behind, because you do play cards in here that help boost things up, so it's a possibility, but 
Uh, most of the time, you're not going to use it for that. You use it just as a means to the next level up, and it essentially turns your uh, it turns your Phoenix Mon into an Omni Mon essentially because it's 15k with him underneath it. Absolutely, you gain a free Omni, and I think that's your perfect play, right? You always. I know the Volcanic Dramon and the Security Attack plus one is there. It looks really, you know, hot, <laughs> literally, uh, because he's a flaming dragon, but uh, no pun intended. But like, uh, so it looks really like a hot play. You want to, this is the play you're after. You want that Security Attack plus one. But I think your actual boss in this deck is actually Phoenix Mon. This is the one you want to be on. Uh, this is the one most comfortable. When you talk about building a tall deck, I think you see him at the end of it and you don't see the Volcanic Dramon. Am I right? No, the Volcanic Dramon you typically sit on unless, like, you know, you know that you can apply the pressure um, or they're going really, really heavy rookie rush on you, then you punish them for that. Uh, other than that, you just kind of sit on the Volcanic Dramon. You don't really go into it unless you don't really have another choice, if, like, if you don't see a Phoenix Mon. So... Perfect. So, so basically, yeah, so the Phoenix Mon is your, is your boss, right? Mm -hmm. he, he is the guy that you want to have on top of the Metal Greymon, attacking security attack plus one. Uh, so, so yeah, so the red has perfect synergy. I think this is what blue lacks. And I think that's why Zudumon is such a successful deck uh, card. Uh, just because the inheritable creates synergy in the deck. Uh, it wants to be a level six. It, wa it, want, it, it, it just opens up plays uh, for, uh, for the deck to be stronger. And when you see synergy like plus one, plus one, plus security attack, plus one, plus 3k, uh, and then you have a big boss uh, to a 12k or a 10k with a security attack plus one, you just see so much synergy. It's so beautiful to see it. And uh, it, it really rewards you for playing the game, right? It rewards you for evoing mm -hmm. and gaining the cards. So I really like your uh, deck. Uh, the three omnis, the do you feel like that hurt you at all? Uh, how would you? Oh, or actually, before we go jump into the omni, uh, what happened to the War Greymon? Let's talk about War Greymon real quickly. Uh, do you just not like the guy? Okay, he, yeah. he, he he looked at you funny. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> this is definitely um, a, a point of uh, point of interest here. And like, I, I know when, when you were going over the deck list, you're just like, you're like, wait a second, like he's not playing War Greymon. So, um, the reason I'm playing this is because it, it goes back to the whole Zudamon play, like I said, although it's different. Whereas they can just play Zudamon and it'd be good. For me, I can play this and knock off a blocker, and then I'm putting the pressure of having an ultimate on the board, which says the same thing that Zudamon does, which is, if you do not answer this card, it's going to become an Omnimon. Wait, wait, wait. So, can you explain that? Are you talking about the Skull Greymon? You play him and then you go into Volcanic? No, I play the... Alright, so I play... Let's say they have a blocker or something out there. Alright, I play the okay. Skull Greymon. Alright. And then it pretty much tell it, it, it tells my opponent that, okay, I just blew away your blocker for nothing. I put a body on the board. Not only did I put a body on the board, it's an ultimate. Next turn, I can go up into Phoenix Mon Omni Mon and blow something else away. Oh my God! So I see, I I feel it. I feel that pressure <laughs> from here. So interesting, and that's the play here. Um, so the Volcanic Dramon is there also to create that pressure as well, huh? So you like to drop him, uh, overriding, uh, evoing, maybe digivolving him. Um, there's there are points where you just have to kind of go up into him to get up into you know your plays properly. Um, but the way that I saw it was the evolution cost was the same as the War Greymon. The only difference is the War Greymon, you have to swing with, and it has to be blocked. Yeah. If you don't block it, then you don't get the three memory. And then because you're attacking, you're running that risk of it being, you know, blown up from your opponent's security. All so right. I chose to just play a card that I don't have to interact with their security at all. I can play it, delete the problem without even having to, you know, care about it. And then next, if, if they don't answer it next turn, I'm just going to go up into a Phoenix Mon and then an Omni Mon and I'm going to go after something else. Absolutely. So that's actually really cool that you answered that. Uh, you basically answered two questions at the same time. Why you want to, you don't, you don't care about where Greymon is. You don't necessarily care about pressuring 
the security uh, more than maybe fighting the Omni actually earlier. Even though you have the security attack plus one, uh, it's it's there for for you know if you need it, but it's not necessarily you're not going to use it. It's you're actually building up to beat up uh, the monster, the boss, and then uh, also. A lot of people mentioned that the other Metal Greymon, the, the one that blocks and gives, when your block gives you three memory, uh, would be a, a much better, uh, maybe, uh, much better, better, better than this Metal Greymon. Uh, I think you answered that as well. You, you're forced to attack. You're forced to attack. You're forced to uh, check that security. But I actually, War Greymon, I think he's very safe. The only thing that can really beat him in is other tw level sixes because he doesn't activate option cards. But uh, yeah, you still don't want to kind of lose that omni potential. Uh, very interesting. I, I really love digging into your mind and, and, and looking into the thought process. So you you, you don't care about tamers. The, you don't want to change your gameplay towards tamers. And your boss monster here is Phoenix Mon because you want to beat the Omni. So you're b basically building into him. Volcanic Dramon is op an, uh, an extra option there. And if, if, he, if you need to necessarily, you'll go on to him. He's not the worst, yeah. actually. He's not the worst ride. He really isn't. No, I mean, because he gets the security attack. So, I mean, you know, I believe me, I, I love War Greymon, the one that doesn't check for security effects. I, I love that card. And in my original build, I was playing it at two. And... I, it really pained me to have to take it out and everything but if you sit down and you look at it um most of the time that his skill would would resolve it, it's it's very few and far between and the other thing about him is he gains security plus one on play and then he loses it whereas volcanic Dramon keeps it the entire time and also provides a load of pressure by destroying all of your opponent's rookies yeah or even, even devimon in purple like that's why purple is such a good matchup for me because devimon is purple he's 4k i'm gonna i'm gonna knock absolutely him out. it feels so good to eat those devimons it feels so good to break i know they look so annoying but they're actually really easy to destroy and actually yellow later on in the future i mean the devimon strategy is just gonna die out it's gonna be the retaliation strategy uh, uh, where uh, like you you want to have retaliation in your inheritable yeah I mean you'll still play Devimon because you he has the re in inheritable retaliation but you just cannot attack with the, he can't survive any turns uh, mm -hmm. yellow has cards that minus 4k for free like it's basically like insane in the future so yeah that Devimon is gonna get hurt <laughs> he looks really yummy he looks really strong he looks like really competent but when you really check him yeah uh he, he he falls he falls he, he breaks apart uh amazing yeah. so let's let's talk about the omni at three because we did talk about how the draw is not there for a red omni uh you whatever you start your hand with you're pretty much locked into that uh, uh you know w with with a couple extra draws but you, you just don't have the pressure that that that, that, that the amount of draw like blue omni would and the amount of control of the deck so how does that uh, did you, do you like the three omni would you ever increase this number is this, is this the perfect ratio all right so this is where me and max differ because max definitely i think he upped his to four because he felt like he didn't see it enough i haven't reached that point where i felt like i haven't seen it enough like in each of my games i saw omni when i needed to see him and the only time I saw too much of him was during that round that I bricked and I had multiple in my hand. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, usually I'm able to resolve at least one or two Omnis per game. And as long as I can at least do that, I feel like three is the is a good number for him. Um, I think four is a little too much. It's a little too heavy. Uh, I don't want to see multiple Omnis in my hand like early on over the course of the game if i find one and then find another that's great but i do not want to have a bunch of omnimons in my hand so interesting so you actually you you deferred with your partner uh, max tapera as well we talked about this earlier he helped you with this deck or you guys built this deck together and you guys actually deferred on the number of omnimons and i think it's a it's a really easy point of uh, difference here um i, I think the three is i think i think i agree with you totally uh i think the three is uh, even though it looks like you're not going to access it but you j already have so much removal with gaia force 
right and it's free you don't want to you don't want to ever remove that you don't want to reduce the guide force to three just because it's the free removal uh, it's it's the, it's the one you're always going to use first omnimon if he's if he's if you're able to get him out for sure you're going to get him out but he's so inconsistent uh, whereas gaia force is much more consistent so if you yeah. were for example if you were to run four omni and three gaia force i would not like that at all so i like the three uh, instead when i see three omni and four gaia i, I feel comfortable um and I, I think that's that's where your thought process was going as well would, would you say so yep and the other reason i only play three omni too is because i am playing skull Greymon. Uh, which, you know, a lot of times people play Omni, you know, they'll get rid of a blocker if they don't have, you know, multiple copies of a card with the same name to pop off or a bigger threat than that. Usually the, the backup plan is remove the blocker. If they can't provide a blocker to follow up with the next turn, then you're just going to, you know, go in on them. So, but if I'm already blowing away the blocker, the turn before that, or like, or that turn that I'm, that, that, uh, but yeah, it'd be, it'd be the turn after I'd be playing Omni. So the turn before that, if I'm blowing away the blocker with Skull Greymon to follow up next turn to go up into Omni, you know, I'm getting value off of that because I don't have to waste Omni on a blocker. Perfect, perfect, exactly, perfect. So you can get their biggest guy out of the field instead of uh, trying to remove uh, maybe doubles or, or small little rookies. Uh, okay, perfect. So... I, I really like the deck. I really like it. I understand now why the tamers don't exist. Uh, they're not. I mean, do you do you feel like there's any room for tamers in this deck? Uh, I mean, no. This deck is this deck is really like ironclad. Um, if if you remove any piece of it, it it really kind of starts to to break the consistency of it. Um, the most you might be able to get away with, you, you might be able to lose a Skull Greymon and maybe cut Ground Dramon to three to play like two other or two different ultimates in there. But I really wouldn't suggest it because you really want to see those Skull Greymons. You don't want them lingering in the deck. Um, but you want to see them when you need them. If, if I did anything at all to change yeah, let's this say, deck... Let's say your biggest... Or your smallest, your biggest, smallest, whatever. There's a tournament tomorrow. It's another $3,200 this time. <laughs> Would you change anything you're running in, in with this deck? Um, Honestly, I don't think I would. The, the, the deck worked well. If there was any change I would ever make at all to this, it would be to, um, you know, somehow add in another copy of the Metal Greymon uh, okay. that gives 3K. Because uh, that that three K makes all the difference, you know. Just just being able to swing in with, with Omni and not have to worry about running into anything but a security card that can stop him is, is great. And it's the same thing with Phoenix Mon. You know, if, if you put that on top of a a uh, Metal Gray Mon and Neumon or a Geomon under there, Phoenix Mon is sixteen. You no longer have to worry about running into Omni Mon. Actually, yeah, you, you, the only thing that can kill you is an option card, and un, unless you're going against yeah. uh, red or green, nothing literally can kill you, literally, uh, when you're attacking. Uh, amazing. And that's the, uh, that's would you, the biggest thing. I'm sorry, sorry go, go ahead. ahead. Uh, the, the biggest thing, too, is that like once Omni is on the board, too, a lot of decks don't really have the ability to just attack over it, so they have to spend a huge amount of memory to deal with the Omnimon, whether it be by locking it in place with Puppetmon, or uh, devolving it by playing Machine Dramon, or playing a Kokaitis Breath, or a um, whatever Green's card is, the uh, seven drop that puts a suspended the card. The Cluster? Um, yeah, that one, the Cluster. Um, or even Gaia Force. That's a lot of memory you have to pay to deal with it when this deck can just easily swing over it and use the memory to apply more pressure. Absolutely, exactly. So it's so nice to be able to beat Omni's uh, face in uh, without using any uh, any any memory. And actually, I think that's why Green was so successful because they had access to be able to beat the Omni. Uh, well, I guess they're not as successful, but they're still a contender, even though they have no support whatsoever, barely any of their downloading cards and barely any of their uh, most powerful cards. They're still mm -hmm. con a contender in the field, I think, because of that ability to stand as, at a, as a 15k unit or a 16k unit 
and uh, I don't necessarily yep. have to spend seven memory to destroy your six memory card. I'll just beat it in and uh, play another rookie. Uh, really, really uh, gives you choices to play. Um, absolutely love this. Uh, so let's talk about your tournament a little bit. How was the PPG event? I know it was a $2,200 event, so there was emotions running high. Everybody wanted a piece of the prize. Uh, it was a big piece of pie, a huge, huge, huge pie, actually. Everybody wanted a piece. Yep. And uh, so how was the tournament run? Uh, any, any thoughts about PPG? Have you ran any other, have you played in any other PPG events? Uh, if you saw any difference, maybe you can point it out. Um, I've always loved PPG as a store, as a company. You know, um, I played Dragon Ball Super before this and I went to their tournaments for that and they always ran very smooth, very well. Um, their staff is amazing, Su such nice people. Uh, I never had any issues. I always love going to their events prior to this. Uh, as far as the webcam events go, I was skeptical because, you know, it's over webcam. Like, like how, how can you make this work so smoothly? And much to my surprise, it, it ran great. And this was my second tournament for PPG um, through the webcam. I did one uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I think it was like before the New Year's tournament. I think it was the last one that I did and uh, It ran really smooth and when I saw that they were having like a huge cash tournament. I, I had to take part in it so uh, And this one ran it, it ran smoothly. There was no issues whatsoever That's amazing. So Travis, can you tell us what exactly? Can you tell us what you want or are you hiding it? <laughs> um, it's not really hidden because it is actually listed uh, uh, I think it's 9th through 16th got like 50 bucks. Hey, so, okay. Yeah, but you spend 10 and you got, you come out with 50. So, I mean, hey, it's it's something. I mean, right? and, and, and you, already, you also came out with the experience. You came out with a, a strong, reliable build now. You've tested. You came out with a, a test that paid off, literally paid you off. And uh, I yep. think, you know, since Digimon is so early and since PPG is doing so many events, I mean, this is like their third or fourth event. Uh, I, I think that's a good good sign in the future that you're on the right path. Uh, you know, you're building something good. You're building something good, uh, right? And I think you'll definitely see it pay off in the future as long as you, you know, it's it's paying off, right? It's it's, it's showing you, uh, it's confirming that your thoughts were right. So it's it's, it's it has to be nice to, to win, even even if you're it's just fifty bucks, you know. Yep. I mean, and like I said before, like you know, I can't take full credit for the deck. I definitely could not have done it without uh without max and his input on things um it was definitely a huge help and then also with like play testing and practicing with him all throughout last week was also you know a huge help to that uh yeah so you know like, like i said i definitely got to give him credit for this as well dude max tapir has such um, a cool channel if anybody uh, hasn't checked it out yet it's such a cool such a funny channel he actually does really cool uh, digimon content and skits i've seen they're really funny uh, i don't know if he tries to be funny i think he's just trying to be as real as he can <laughs> you can be and they come off super yeah. funny uh so yeah um, i really like his content i'm already a subscriber make sure you guys subscribe yeah, he's actually been doing a lot with his Twitch right now. Um, he's actually growing really fast on Twitch, so I would definitely go check him out over there. He does stuff pretty much every day, sometimes maybe even twice a day, uh, depending on his work schedule. So um, I think he does like, you know, during the day and then he does like a late night stream as well. So definitely give him a check out wow that's a lot of work that's amazing absolutely so if you guys and i i i think he's right now he's only doing uh exclusively digimon tcg content so if you're looking for somebody that's yeah. doing exclusive digimon tcg content that's obviously really smart knows what he's doing uh, i mean he's part of this deck that topped uh max tapera so make sure you guys check him out and uh travis here uh, I just a couple of minutes. Uh, I just want to ask you. Uh, I know we talked a lot about the deck, and uh, I just I want to know what's the perfect first turn for you look like. Uh, what, what do you want to see in your hand? What What do you see in your hand, and you're like, oh my god, no, this was such a brick. Like, can you can you imagine what's a, what's a perfect first hand look like for you? Um, perfect first hand for me. Um, I, I honestly would like to see at least one guy of force in my hand. Um, I love having it as an option there to deal with any kind of 
like line that my opponent has created because just being able to blow away that line and have them have to rebuild it up and, you know, they have to hope that they have the answer if I get rid of it. So uh, just having that as an answer is always is always nice. Uh, you want to have Agumon in your opening hand, followed by either Greymon or Dark Tyranno, preferably Greymon. Um, Dark Tyranno can help you if you're going first. It just puts your opponent to one, you know, it doesn't give them much to work with. Uh, and then you want to see Metal Greymon for the extra boost in power and a Phoenix Mon. And then you want to try to find your Omnis as you're evolving up and drawing through your deck. So, mm. I mean, opening with one isn't terrible, but like you definitely want to find it as you're going. So, uh, so from what I can see, maybe a Gaia Force. Uh, two rookies, one Guillemon, one Monodromon, like one, 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 two cost, one or one Agumon for sure, or, since this is the first turn. Yeah. Instead of the yeah, Guillemon, Agumon. And and, and yep. then one of each, right? One of the dark, uh, one of the level fours, one of the level fives, and one of the level six. So if you can have, I see what you mean. So absolutely, it looks good. Uh, usually some decks love to see tamers early, or they don't want to see their tamers early. So like purple, for example, if they see it at first hand, it's like, ah, oh, what am I gonna do here? Uh, because uh, the, the, they can't play it first turn, or, or if they, they can, but they're still, you know, they miss, they miss their timing on it. Uh, but uh, this deck doesn't necessarily rely on these tamers, so it doesn't need it. it just needs its lineup ready, and uh, a level three or level four and a level five is really all you need, right? Yep. Perfect, perfect. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, do you see any struggles that this deck can struggle against? Do you, have you went against the deck and you're like, oh my god, there, there's just nothing I can do against this? I, because I've ran, for example, against purple multiple times and they just seem to have an answer to everything uh uh you know in, in certain uh, they can answer really a lot so yeah. do, you, do you feel like there's a deck that this deck just struggles so much against um i can't really say that there's one that like struggles there's certain scenarios definitely like you just said with the purple like you know like i said during my one fe during my feature match and everything the guy opened two two uh a heat viper one trump sword and a chimera and everything i put on the board he just blew up exactly so, so it happens though i mean it's it, you know it's, it's the luck of the game and everything and sometimes you just got to keep something back in the raising area and build it up and then hope to go in for like a, you know a solid swing and then force them to give you more memory so you can rebuild if they have to get rid of that threat so other than that, I, I really don't have many other issues with other decks. Uh, obviously not yellow. Black isn't an issue for me because I don't care what, what you do. You can throw that War Greymon blocker. I'm just going to blow it up with Skull Greymon. Yeah. So, um... What about Blue Omni? Uh, Blue Omni, like I said, I played four of them during the tournament. I 2 owed three of them and I drew with one. Yeah, man. I think the pressure that security attack plus one, that it's just too good. It's just too good. And I've I've noticed even Steven Rodriguez. He took the third. His deck is so interesting. He actually accessed. Uh, he he plays uh, the loaded Lyomons. I think that's to access attacks from level five because I think Blue Omni just didn't have any pressure from level five, and mm -hmm. they had to wait to get into a level six or an Omni to start attacking, or or, or they're really they're risking losing that level five, which is extremely va valuable. You know what I mean? They don't want to lose it. So Steven Rodriguez, I think he found a loophole by playing those loaded Lyomons and uh, it gave him, uh, you know, a boost. But actually, this this now we're seeing the evol evol uh, evolution of this meta. I mean, Blue Omni is uh, losing its its top contender status slowly, and I can see this being eroded even further with the you, you know with the evolution of, of deck lists like yours uh, that don't rely on tamers mm -hmm. are more consistent. Um, it's very interesting, uh, you know, I, I, I see this game evolving, you know, I, I've, I've had some talks with some people that did say that the meta is solved, especially with the webcam tournaments, I mean, we've already had like 
five or six, three official webcam tournaments and then other PPG events. And they're all extremely successful, over 100 players with the Digimon TCG game. It hasn't even released yet, you know what I mean? Imagine the release, once the release is out, a thousand players I can see or more per webcam. So uh, how do you, what do you, what, do you like this webcam era? Do you, what do you think of the webcam meta? Do you, like uh, where, 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 where everybody should be on the same level Everybody has the same sets coming out and everybody's creating decks and just competing against each other on the webcam globally. Honestly, in my opinion, like like most card players, like nothing beats, you know, good old fashioned going to the card shop, hanging with your friends, you know, playing, slinging some cards, playing a few games. Uh-huh, like, you miss it. Yeah, I, I, I do. I, I really do. And I really hope that it goes back to that here soon. Um... I know Bandai was talking about starting up uh, like local leagues and stuff in in February. I don't know how they're gonna do that. I, I'm interested to see what they're gonna do if if we can you know maybe get back out into actual play. Um, I've only been doing the webcam thing right now mainly because it's the only way for me to really get any use out of my cards at the moment. So I was one of the lucky few that actually you know managed to that had a shop that actually got a good surplus of them in so mm -hmm. uh i pretty much have all the cards that i need for whatever deck that i need to play perfect perfect um so 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 for you uh you actually missed the local field you, you missed the local feel and uh, hanging out with your friends and but but you i think you still see the viability right that of this becoming a competitive option especially for tournaments uh, on on like a national league or oh yeah like absolutely like especially on a national like national level like I think that's so cool that we've gotten to play with people from other countries and We're everything. With Canadians and, and Jordan Beard with his weird uh, yeah, green deck. Did you see it, that core TCG? It's funny because you get to play with some of the players that you would never normally get to play against unless you exactly. unless they have like a world or something. Mm -hmm, exactly. So yeah. it, it it's it's pretty cool right now that that this is a thing. So um. I really can't complain with, with with that fact, but you know, I, I really do. You know, after like a year of this, I, I'm so ready just to go back to the card shop and play cards. So, you're right, man. Nothing, nothing beats the locals. That's why I think all of us are still playing TCG. We started when we were really young. Uh, we had our friends hanging yep. out around us. Uh, the guy at the shop was super cool. Gave us cool promo looking card. You know, cool looking promo cards. And uh, I think maybe that's actually what Bandai's plan is to increase league, uh, to have a league, a local league. Maybe they're push a lot of promo mm -hmm. cards or whatever promo products. Um, but yeah, this I think this was a very, uh, you know, valuable conversation. I learned a lot from your deck. Um, is, do you have any final thoughts? Uh, do, do you want to maybe shout out somebody or anything out before we leave? Maybe you can leave our audience with anything to rem remember you or follow you with. Um... I think I got my shout outs and stuff out of the way. Um, as far as final thoughts go, um, I'm a firm believer in that, you know, when, when they make these cards, every card has a use. Like, you can read a card and it, it could be like, you know, the worst card you've probably ever read. But I guarantee you, in some kind of combo, in some kind of strategy, or maybe not right away, maybe down the line, that card will have some kind of a use. And if I've learned anything, from, I've been playing card games since I was 13, 14 years old, and I'm 33 now. So if, I, if I've learned anything, it's take a play set of your cards out of, out of your box, like keep a play set of everything. And if you want to move the rest, that's fine, but keep a play set for yourself because I guarantee you at some point, those cards are going to have some kind of a use down the line. Dude, I totally believe that, especially with this deck. Um, absolutely, I believe that uh, because, uh, well, I think Digimon is pretty unique because they're already coming up with a promotional booster set uh, for BT 1.0. So they already know that they don't have a lot of product or like Omnimons are so rare. They're already bringing back, uh, they're reprinting these cards already from, from like the first set. They're already planning reprints, I guess for two sets. I'm not sure what their plan is completely, but they already revealed it, uh, that they're planning to reprint. 
already but but i did think it was extremely valuable to keep these cards even these regular uncommon toss you know like the monodromons oh my god keep them yeah. these two cost these two cost digimon are always going to be viable uh these agumons are always going to be viable there's always going to be a deck that plays them these tyranomons absolutely greymons everything's so viable what are your thoughts about muchumon though muchumon right here i'll show it to you um, oh the bird <laughs> come on um, he, he he's funny. the number one most useless card he has to be i mean he does have 5k though oh my god he's so strong <laughs> it was funny it was funny right so during um I, I had the stream on my on my tv and stuff when i was like in between rounds and stuff and i was watching them uh go into all these feature matches and they went into this one match and i guess the guy was playing like mega zoo or something right and he was playing this card in it and he's like why are you playing this card what is the purpose it doesn't of this to card <laughs> it doesn't tie to volcanic Jermon, dude ah, i figured it out honestly honestly the only thing that i can see this having a use for is having a play to make if you're at zero and you have something <laughs> like Digitama to, to yeah, evolve you want to keep him at one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a use, though. You know, it has some kind of a use, and you know, maybe, maybe down the line there could be something that manipulates those numbers, or I don't know. Like Very it's, interesting. it's some. You're right, man. See, I was even laughing at this card, and then I actually came up with the use. It, it, it actually counters Volcanic Dramon. If you're really scared of Volca if Volcanic Dramon, there, it was met the meta, you would run mm -hmm. these over any other level 3 because you're losing all your level 3s immediately. Uh, so, interesting. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I think that's how they balance this game. Uh, they figured that a way to make everything. It, it, there's just so many numbers levels, Evo numbers, costs, hard cast costs um the, even even their now we know hybrid can be utilized in yeah. a different way it's so intense it's so cool to see and inheritables also and on play effects and main effects and digi burst effect it's going to be such a cool game i can't wait to see the future um uh, yeah so the, uh, i guess uh, let's go ahead and end the interview here because we could talk forever travis uh, uh yeah, but yeah final cool. thoughts and do you what do you want to see in the future for digimon Honestly, like the future looks good for the game. I just want to see the game succeed because, you know, not especially with this IP, um, you know, it, it's got a history of games that have flopped. So I really want to see this one take off. So far, it looks like it has. I think Bandai has learned their lesson from their previous mistakes. <clears throat> Naruto. Um, anyway. <laughs> Man, I uh, wanted that game to, 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 to win yep. so bad. <laughs> but... Uh, I just want the game to succeed. So far, from what I've seen from the uh, the Japanese meta game and the sets from that, uh, set five looks amazing. I'm so excited to get my hands on set five uh, with all the Omnimon support and everything in there. It looks so good. And all I can really say as a final thought is just to kind of be patient. You know, like right now, Rookie Rush, I know it's it's an annoying deck. Nobody wants to go up against it. You know, people think you're scummy for playing it and whatnot. But, you know, look in set five. There's a tamer that comes out that pretty much says, oh, you play Rookie Rush? Well, guess what? You lose. Exactly. So, yeah, so it changes the whole game, changes the meta. I yeah. can't believe it. Just be patient, you know, try to enjoy the game for what it is, you know, try to improve yourself, especially right now during all this isolation, you know, all you can improve, you know, try to build yourself up for when like the real game gets going when we finally get back into shops and into big events. Exactly. I think this is going to be uh, my strategy is that I'm going to win now uh, against all my opponents uh, at my locals because I've, I've been having all these... Uh, talks with so many so many pro players so many professionals so many guys that are winning topping i'm able to take a lot of this mindset and i hope you guys were able to gain some value from this interview today uh we had travis or halloran o'halloran o'halloran it's oh, halloran yep uh, travis o'halloran uh, make sure you guys check out his patreon um at patreon dot com slash info mon and he has some really cool articles he does a lot of tcg content and uh, in the future do you see uh, are you going to be doing any more digimon tcg content are you, is there a youtube channel we can find you or is that something you want to do in the future um i i have my i have a youtube channel set up i don't have anything on it just yet um Currently, I'm working from a Chromebook right now, uh, so there's really not much for me to really work with in terms of uh, 
video set up. So I might try to put a couple things up on my YouTube eventually, but right now I've just been enjoying writing articles and, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get my Patreon built up uh, through just, just through articles and I might put a couple videos on there as well. All right, amazing guys. So if you like this uh, interview, if you liked uh, Travis O'Halloran, if you want to support him, make sure you guys go to his patreon.com. That's the best way to find him, follow him, follow up with all his, uh, you know, all his content and uh, support him as well. So that's the best way, guys. Make sure you guys check that out. Uh, besides that, really, we're going to go ahead and stop here. Thank you so much, Travis O'Halloran, for stopping by the Botanator TCG. We really appreciate it. Thank you for all the value you've given us. Thank you. Thank you.